So what will we do then if we don't have any odd powers of sine or cosine? It's entirely possible that we have only even powers of these functions. Well, in that case, what we would need to do is reduce their degree using the power reducing identities. And those formulas I've provided here for you. Uh, so they're very similar to one another, and they're both based off of the double angle formula for cosine. But you don't really need to know where they come from as long as you know how to apply them. Uh, essentially, sine squared of x could be written as 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2, and cosine squared could be written as 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2. So for instance, let's say we need to evaluate the integral of sine squared x dx. Well, this doesn't involve products of trig functions, but this strategy that we're developing doesn't necessarily have to involve product of trig functions. It just often works when there are. But in this case, um, we can get a process to work here. And what we need to do is rewrite sine squared x dx as 1 minus cosine of 2x divided by 2 dx. And this is a pretty common thing that you'll have to do throughout the course, is evaluate even powers of either sine or cosine. And you'll need to always change that into their power reducing equivalent uh, in order to continue evaluating and getting your final answer in those problems. 1 half is just a constant, which can be pulled out of the integral altogether, leaving us with 1 minus cosine 2x dx. And when I integrate here, uh, what I'm going to end up with is 1 half times the integral of 1 is just x, and the integral of cosine 2x. So truthfully speaking, what we would need to do is use u substitution here. So we could let u equal 2x, and then du would be 2x dx, but we don't have a factor of 2, so we would bring that over and say 1 half du is x times dx. So we'd eff effectively get uh, cosine of u times 1 half. Then when we integrate, you'll integrate the outer function which would become sine, well, yeah, it would be sine, and then uh, replacing back with the 2x. So essentially, as long as you know that if all you have is a constant multiplier on your variable x on the inside of a function, that's going to come out as, uh, as divided, so just 1 over whatever that value is. And then just simply take the derivative of the outer function. So cosine has sine as its integral. Then leave 2x alone. Uh, and then finally we have our plus c. Not having to do these steps of u substitution for those types of transformations every time will be a big savings uh, of time in this class. So that's definitely something you want to get used to. So um, that we could write as our final answer, or you could distribute the 1 half. It doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, but that would be x over 2 minus 1 fourth sine of 2x plus c. If you happen to have multiple functions that are even powers, and you don't have any odd powers, you have to transform them all into using your power reducing formulas. So for instance here, cosine squared times sine squared, we would transform them both into their equivalent. Cosine is 1 plus cosine 2x all over 2, and sine squared is 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2 dx. 
those are transformed. And now often there's some algebra that has to be done before we can actually do the integration. First things first, handle any kind of constants. That is an easy thing to do. So I could just simply make this 1 fourth times the integral of 1 plus cosine 2x times 1 minus cosine of 2x. Now, I have two things multiplied, and uh, those are both binomials. So I need to use FOIL to multiply these out. So I'm literally saying multiply the first two items together, uh, you know, then uh, these two together, then your inner two, and your last two. So let's see what happens. One fourth, uh, this would be 1 minus cosine of 2x plus cosine of 2x. And this will become minus cosine uh, squared of 2x dx. OK, now here's where things can get a little bit uh, crazy because, well, first off, something that's really nice that just happened is I've re come up with a negative factor of cosine 2x and a positive factor. Those will cancel out. So that's great. Um, you know, one less thing. But now I have another even factor of cosine. It's now cosine squared of 2x instead of just cosine squared of x. So I'm going to need to use the power reducing formula yet again in order to rewrite this in a way that I can actually uh, evaluate this integral. So cosine squared of 2x, here's what will happen. It will become 1 plus cosine, and it's you don't want to think of this so much as just double. Um, it don't, that would only work with like a single angle and doubling it. You can double any angle. So if you start with 2x, then double it to 4x on the inside of this part. OK, so now 1 fourth here times the integral of, well, let's see here. I suppose I could factor out the 1 half. Or I could kind of look at this 1 as 2 over 2. And then I would have two fractions with the same denominator, and I could combine them into a single fraction. So I think that's the route I'm going to go, because this would be 2 minus all of this. So 1 plus cosine 4x all over 2, which would give me I'm going to bring this 2 out over here and make that 1 8 And then 2 minus each of these terms, that's actually going to make this a negative. So integral 2 minus 1 is 1. And then the negative distributes to the cosine as well. So minus cosine 4x dx. All right, now we've got something we can integrate. So this is going to be 1 8th. The integral of 1 is just x. Integral of cosine, um, we'll switch to sine. And because of this 4 here, it's actually going to be minus 1 4th sine 4x, and then plus c. So it's looking like our final answer here, if we wanted to distribute that 1 8th, would be x over 8 minus 1 32nd sine 4x plus c. And there we have it. Now, in this example, things were kind of nice because these terms right here canceled out. Okay. Uh, it would have gotten a little bit more difficult had they not done that. And 
it wouldn't have done that if I had an example, say, like the integral of sine to the fourth x dx. Because what I would have to do is decompose that into sine squared x times sine squared x. Uh, it would not work to try and preserve one factor of sine and then try to uh, use u substitution because uh, the derivative of sine is cosine, so I'd have to have a factor of cosine to substitute with. So I'd have to break it down into two even powers, and then I could split that up into 1 minus cosine 2x over 2 times 1 minus cosine 2x over 2. And I think you can see where I'm going here. When I FOIL these, that middle term doesn't cancel, and so I end up with a little bit more. I have an extra term that I would have to integrate, so it would get a little bit more difficult in that respect. But that's how I would have to do that particular example. So um, you can do those, but it can get a little bit difficult. You have to do a lot of algebra to work with those.